Hey guys, G here, back in the Luna Gecko's Gecko Room here in Lake Charles, Louisiana. You know what? It's been a while since we shot an IGTV video. Last one was in Toronto, Canada. There's been some stuff that's happened since then. If you haven't had a chance yet, or if you don't even know yet, go check out our new YouTube channel, Luna Gecko's, now on YouTube. We did a little teaser launch, the story of Luna Gecko's, it just uh, just landed the other day. Coming up real soon, we're going to give a full room tour on January 11th, 2021 at 11 a.m. Central Standard Time. We'll be dropping the entire tour of the Luna Gecko's new Lake Charles, Louisiana version of our gecko room. But anyway, today what I want to talk about is what I like to call the the dark side of the moon. It's the things that happen when you keep and breed reptiles that aren't always fun, but they do happen and you do have to figure out how to deal with them. Today, what we have is we have a brand new first year breeder male um, that we put with the female that something didn't look right with him. So I, I, I took a closer look at him and sure enough, he had a prolapse. So first thing I did was separated the female out of the enclosure, did a quick cleanup, soaked him a little bit in warm water. I didn't have any sugar or any honey to further treat him last night when I noticed this. So first thing this morning, I was able to go to the store and pick up a couple supplies, and I figured we could shoot a video to walk you through a prolapse. So here are the basic supplies that we're gonna try and treat this prolapse with. Um, please be aware that if it if it doesn't get any better, um, he's going to have to he's going to have to be taken to an exotic vet and seek some medical attention. Um, but first, we're going to try a little home uh, treatment and remedy to to see if we can um, get that prolapse to release and, and actually retract back in. So what we have is we just have a little six quart Sterlite. Got to make sure it's clean. Um, so this one, uh, before I put some water in it, I cleaned it and it is nice and clean and it has real nice warm water in it not it can't be too hot it's got to be more like you know like a warm nice warm bath if you want you could put a temperature um, a thermometer in there and you can you can test it uh, you can generally just test it by feel you don't want it to be cool or cold and you don't want it to, to be hot at all you just want it to be nice and warm and then what we have here is just pure cane regular sugar this happens to be Community Coffee's version. And what we're gonna do is, there's no real measuring of this. We're just gonna dump this sugar in the water and we're gonna make a nice sugar water solution. Um, stir it up a little bit with my hand to dissolve it. Try and get, you may not get it all dissolved, but we're gonna try and dissolve that sugar for the most part. We're gonna let him soak in this sugar, this warm sugar water solution, you know, for about 10 minutes, or as long as he will tolerate it. Now, the other thing to make sure is make sure the water, if the water's too low and it doesn't actually cover um, when he's resting in there, if it doesn't actually cover his, his hemi, then you gotta make sure that you put a little bit more water in there. And if the water's too high and he can't keep his head out of the water and he, you don't want him to actually inhale or ingest any of that water. So you want to just make sure it's a good idea to have a cup. So I got an extra little solo cup laying around over here. So I, I think that's probably about the right height because we've we've done several of these baths, you know, with stuck shed and some things over the years. Um, but every gecko is a little bit different size. So if that's a little bit too much water, then I'll scoop a little out with this when we put them in. And if it's not quite enough water, I'll just go get a little bit more in this cup and we'll just keep adding some water until we get it right. So I'm gonna put the lid back on this for the minute, for the moment to try to keep that warm. Also, in addition to the sugar, we've got some honey. So after his soak, we're just gonna put a little drop of honey uh, on his prolapse. Um, that generally speaking, that will, uh, uh, that will help ease that back in. And then I do have a couple Q-tips here. These are kind of last resort, hoping not to use these today. One of the things that is often a cause of a prolapse um, is, a, is a sperm plug. And it's very common in reptiles where basically uh, 
happens a lot with first time breeder males where they'll have excess sperm um, at the end of the deed and it'll, it'll harden or crust, create a bit of a crust or a scab like on the top, which will prevent it from retracting. And a nice moist or, or damp Q-tip is a nice way to try to remove that. We're probably not gonna do this today. I'd like to start with the soak and the honey and then we'll look at them again tomorrow. And if we, we do notice a plug, we'll see if we, we have to resort to the Q-tip. I prefer not to touch it, try to leave it alone. It's a very sensitive area, as you can imagine. And then obviously I have some hand sanitizer because I'm gonna be handling him. And he currently has a portion of his body outside of his body that's not normally outside of his body. So I just wanna make sure that I don't have anything on my hands um, that can harm him. So first thing I'm gonna do is do a little hand sanitizer. Let that dry for a bit. You know, also, we're talking about prolapse today, but like I said, the dark side of the moon. You know, a lot of things can go wrong um, in, the, in the breeding of reptiles or even just in the keeping of reptiles. You know, we've had females that have been egg bound. Uh, the vast majority of them that were able to, to with a warm soak and, uh, and maybe a gentle massage, they were eventually able to pass those eggs. Last season, we did have a, a single female, unfortunately, first time breeder. We were not able to get those bound eggs out. Um, she uh, unfortunately did pass away. So it does happen. Uh, it's not uncommon when you, you wait, you know, 30, 40, 50 days for an egg to hatch. And, you know, sometimes babies hatch with deformities. You have to deal with them. You have to provide special needs. Uh, sometimes uh, you have to say goodbye uh, to them. So, you know, not an entirely uplifting video, but it's realistic. And when you're breeding reptiles or even just keeping reptiles, this stuff happens. You know, a lot more common things occur, like simple injuries, you know, particularly when you're breeding reptiles. Males and females don't always get along. So, you know, even if they do get along, oftentimes the, um, the act of breeding uh, can be a bit rough. Um, so you will get some nicks and scrapes and, and things here and there. Those are pretty easy to take care of. Sometimes they don't get along at all and you can get some pretty severe injuries. And if you're not paying attention, potentially even death of the male or the female or sometimes both. So another video, we'll talk about all those things. Today we're focused on prolapse. First time breeder male, uh, his name's Cinco. He's a uh, pure blood emmerine. One of my favorite holdbacks from last season. Um, really hope that we can get this fixed and cured. Uh, at the very least, uh, he is done for the season. So even if this does solve his problem and he's able to retract, we will not be bringing him again this year. He will rest for the rest of the season. Um, and if he does well, um, maybe next year we'll think about it again. If we ultimately have to seek veterinary care for him, uh, um, he very, very likely will never breed again. So let's grab him. Hold on. All right, so there is my boy Cinco, and I'm going to tell you because I mentioned in the beginning, I got to put my glasses on here. I mentioned in the beginning, come on little buddy, that um, I noticed this yesterday. So I was able to grab the female out of here yesterday, and I did a quick modification to his enclosure yesterday. Um, there you can see his prolapse. I'm gonna go ahead and get him in the water. He's not gonna love it, but let's see. Yeah, see, it is just high enough that, that it is just covering the base of his tail and ultimately both of his hemis. So let's let his boys soak in there for a little bit in that sugar water solution. So here's what our cage setup for adult males typically looks like. So we're in a VE6 rack system, which you'll see on the room tour on the YouTube channel on Monday the 11th of January, 2021. Um, but in the VE6, the, the heat tape is across the back 
this is the back, this is the front. The way we set them up is uh, we have a moist hide in the rear portion that has eco earth. Uh, it's, a, it's a mix, it's eco earth and tropical soil and a little vermiculite. We use this for our lay boxes, but we also put it in the mailboxes um, because they like, they like that nice comfortable um, hide and they also seem to, you know, many of them seem to want to dig in it instinctually. So we leave that. They have a hide over here on the cool side, water dish, food dish, calcium dish. All right. Well, the first thing I did yesterday when I noticed his prolapse was I got rid of this because I don't want any of this um, foreign material. So no cocoa fiber, no soil, no vermiculite. I don't want anything that could possibly stick to that prolapse to be in there. I took out his hide, his water, his calcium, and I took out his paper towels, and then I went and sanitized and cleaned his bin real good, which I'm gonna do real quickly again. You can just enjoy Mr. Cinco, and I will be right back in a second after I sanitize this with some wipeout and hot water. Ain't nothing like soaking the boys in some nice warm water. All right, we're back. So normally when we do cleaning day, I, I wouldn't leave all this water in here. I would dry this up a bit. Um, but one of the things we wanna do is we wanna make sure that he has a clean, very, very clean. So instead of you know every couple days or once a week or however often your cleaning schedule is, now that we're dealing with a prolapse, we're cleaning every day. So we're gonna make sure he has fresh paper towels in here every day. I normally do on a, on a typical setup, one layer of paper towels. I'm doing two layers of paper towels because we wanna keep him moist. We wanna keep that prolapse nice and moist. So I'm gonna put two layers of paper towels in there. And grab my handy dandy sprayer. And we're gonna get this, not sopping wet, but we're gonna get these paper towels nice and moist. All right. Again, we're not going to put that hide that has substrate in here again. I'm going to actually take his cool hide. I'm going to put it all the way in the back. So hopefully he will go in there and, and rest on that nice warm paper towel over the, the heat tape and might help him get a little bit better. So we're just gonna have to wait until he's been in there about 10 minutes. All right, we're back. It's been 10 minutes. So while he's been in there, uh, my boy Cinco has been in there soaking, uh, soaking his family jewels. I, uh, I actually had his tub back in the rack because you remember we got this thing nice and, nice and damp. So I had it back in the rack warming up so he wasn't gonna get back on some cold paper towels. So it's been a little over 10 minutes, probably been about 15 minutes. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go ahead and get him out of the water. I'm gonna flip him over and my uh, handy dandy trusty camera woman is uh, just gonna just dab a little honey on his junk while she holds the camera. So boys and girls, this is a professional move here. Not by me, I'm an amateur. This is a professional move by our camera woman. So we're gonna see how she does dabbing honey and holding the camera. Come on, brother. Oh boy, that water really did cool off. Actually, if he is nice and calm, I might be, no, he's not gonna be calm. All right, babe, you got you're gonna have to. Am I just doing? Just a little dab of honey on his junk, on the, the piece that's sticking out. Honey. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. 
we could just put something in there like epic fail. Well, that didn't go as planned. So I don't know, that got a little crazy. We probably should have had a tripod, but what ended up happening is he was, he was barking like a fool, did not want to be upside down, did not want me anywhere near his prolapse. So what ended up happening is I thought we had him just right and our trusty dusty, trusty dusty? I'm not sure the saying. Handy dandy. Handy dandy? Yeah, maybe it's handy dandy. Handy dandy, I like that. So our handy dandy camera woman, um, just as the honey was dripping out, he moved and the honey landed on my hand. So I had a nice little put puddle of honey right there. So good thing I sanitized. I was actually able to then flip him back over and, I, and then he kind of settled down because he didn't want to be upside down. So I was able to dab that drop of honey on my hand onto his prolapse, um, which as soon as I touched his prolapse, he started barking again. So um, that sure must hurt. All right, so he's back in there resting. As you can imagine, I touched his no-nose. So he's had a traumatic day. So we're gonna leave him alone for the rest of the day. Check on him again tonight. Probably repeat the procedures with a, certainly with a soak and a warm bath tonight. See how he's doing in the morning. Um, if he's not getting any better, uh, I guess we're going to have to make a, make a trip to an exotic vet and, and get him professionally treated. Don't want these to go on too long. So, you know, a day or two is, is about as far as you want to be able to try to treat this on your own before you have to go see a vet. So uh, stay tuned. We'll give you updates and let you know how Mr. Cinco is doing. Um, thanks again. Hope for the best. By the way, he was offended by my shirt because he uh, is a blood amarine, so he's a tangerine line gecko. He did not like this shirt, so he might not have been barking because I was trying to put honey on his thingy. He might have been barking because he didn't like my shirt. So you can get this shirt, lunageckos.shop. Check it out. Thanks for watching. Let's hope for the best for Mr. Cinco and his uh, unfortunate prolapse. Good news is he does have two. I'm hoping to keep both, as I'm sure he is. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like it, give us a follow, share it with your friends. Go ahead and leave some comments. Till next time, I'm Jay, Luna Geckos. Have a good one. Hey guys, G here, back in the gecko room. You know, on our last IGTV video, we gave you a, a treatment video on our boy, Mr. Cinco who suffered from a prolapsed hemipenis. And a lot of you, thank you, have, uh, have expressed your thoughts and concerns. Uh, and also, a lot of people have asked for updates on how Mr. Cinco is doing. So I figured we would shoot a quick one today to give you an update. So for about two days, um, as we showed in the video, and it's the previous IGTV video, prolapse treatment video, so if you haven't seen that, go check it out. And I'll tell you what we did is we did what we were capable of doing without professional veterinary care. Uh, we gave Mr. Cinco um, nice warm sugar baths twice a day. The purpose of that, and that's another thing we didn't cover in the last video, is sugar is an anti-inflammatory when it's mixed with water. So that solution, what it's designed to do uh, in the warm water, it's designed to soothe him, obviously clean him, potentially if he has an obstruction or even um, maybe a sperm plug, that warm water solution could help free up that obstruction or dissolve that sperm plug. Uh, in addition, adding the sugar to the water, what it does is it it's an anti, acts as an anti-inflammatory and it'll help, um, should help bring down some of that inflammation. In addition, when you have a prolapse, you have a, a, you know, a part of the body that's typically inside the body that's on the outside of the body and you want to be able to keep that clean and you want to keep it moist because what you don't want to do is you don't want to lose blood flow to it and you don't want it to ultimately die. Uh, in this case, we did that for a couple days. The swelling seemed to have gone down pretty substantially, but it was only partially retracted. It did not actually fully retract. Uh, so we felt it was time uh, to take him and, and actually seek some professional uh, exotic veterinary care. Now, unfortunately, for those of you that know, um, we are now back in Lake Charles, Louisiana. And for those of you that don't know, you need to go to our brand new YouTube channel 
and watch the story of G and how Luna came to be, and then you'll know what everyone else now knows. One of the things about Lake Charles, Louisiana, at the end of August, it was devastated by Hurricane Laura, um, and it's still recovering. One of the unfortunate side effects of that disaster is there are two primary exotic vet clinics in the Lake Charles area. One is in Sulphur, one is in Lake Charles. The one in the city limits of Lake Charles was demolished. So the, the storm, 150 plus mile an hour winds, you know, uh, strongest storm to ever hit Southwest Louisiana, uh, devastated their facility. So they are closed at the moment. They're trying to rebuild. Hopefully they'll get reopened soon. The other one in Sulphur was damaged, um, wasn't destroyed, but it was damaged significantly. And when I called them, uh, they said that they would be able to take a look at, at Mr. Cinco, um, but if ultimately he needed any type of surgical procedure, um, their surgery area of the clinic was badly damaged and they have no ability to, to do anesthesia or actually do surgery. So they recommended a place in Beaumont, Texas. Now we're over here in Southwest Louisiana. Beaumont's a, it's about an hour, give or take, depends on traffic and depends on where you're going in Beaumont. So this morning, uh, Mr. Cinco got packed up in a, in a nice clean carrier, a nice warm shipping box, headed to Texas. Go west, young man, that's what we told Mr. Cinco. So today's quick story is uh, the story of Mr. Cinco goes to Beaumont. And it's kind of a play off of Mr. Smith Goes to Washington, but I guarantee, well, heck, I don't even remember the movie. Everybody watching this video does not know that movie because I think it came out in the 1930s. So um, classic political satire. Anyway, maybe not even appropriate given uh, the times we live in today. But nonetheless, uh, Mr. Cinco and I, off to Texas we went. Um, I had a quick journey, about a, it took about an hour to get over to Beaumont, and uh, we checked in to this facility, vet facility, that we had never been to before. Uh, it was very busy, you know, very busy place. There were lots of folks waiting in the waiting room. Um, Mr. Cinco, I believe, was the only leopard gecko there because a lot of people said, uh, what is that? Um, so <laughs> uh, maybe, maybe did some educational uh, instruction while we were in the waiting room. Eventually, we were ultimately able to see uh, the vet who was, abs he was absolutely amazing. You know, we got Mr. Cinco weighed in. We were able to check him out. Uh, first thing, obviously my concern all along and why we continue to treat him somewhat homopathically is we wanted to try uh, to save that, that hemipenis. All too often with a prolapse, when you go to the vet, the first thing the vet wants to do is just amputate it. The doctor today was able to flip him over, take a look at it, and said that uh, it looks like it has pretty good blood flow. The coloration was nice and pink, and he felt that it didn't need to be amputated right now. What he wanted to do was try to get it retracted. He took Mr. Cinco and gave him a surgical cleaning, was able to clean up that, that prolapse uh, really nice and good, and was able to gently uh, work it back in. However, Given the fact that it's still swollen, not as swollen as it was a couple days ago, um, but it is still swollen, um, the vet was very concerned that it that he might relapse. Um, given that you know that the, the the unusual size, it may just pop right back out. Um, so as a precautionary measure, uh, the doctor put a, a single stitch over that right hemi penis. Uh, was able to to keep that in, and now he is on. A little bit of uh, anti-inflammatory and um, antibiotic for the next seven days. And then we have an appointment in a week. Mr. Cinco will be going back over to Beaumont and he will get that single stitch removed and uh, hopefully be good to go. You know, regardless what happened, uh, the ultimate outcome for Mr. Cinco in, in, in this particular instance, uh, he's done breeding for the season. So we'll see how how he heals and what his condition is like in the future. And perhaps, um, perhaps next season he'll, he'll make another run at it. But for this season, he's done. Good news for the moment, at least, Mr. Cinco still has two hemi penises, which, uh, you know, 
two is better than one. So we'll see, uh, we'll see how he does and we'll take a, uh, we'll, we'll keep a close eye on him. We are going to continue to keep him in a minimal enclosure environment. Um, just double layer paper towels. Doctor does want to continue to keep those paper towels moist and clean and free of debris. Uh, so we're going to keep his humidity up a little bit um, to uh, keep, keep that area nice and moist and, and clean. For those of you that didn't like the word moist in the last video, I think I've now said it um, a few times. So damp, we'll go with damp um, from now on. So one of the things that I love about the trip to Beaumont is it's just I-10 West, right? I mean, it's just, you just get on I-10 West and off you go. I don't know if it's a little known fact, it just depends on how big of a fan you are. But right before you get to Beaumont, you pass the exit for Port Arthur, and there's a big billboard right there at that exit. Does anybody know? Come on. Home of Janis Joplin. So from that Port Arthur exit all the way into Beaumont, I'm just singing Bobby McGee, bringing me right in. How can you, how can you not love Janis Joplin? Come After, on. you know, all that good news and, and that great treatment that Mr. Cinco was able to receive, um, we had to get a little treat too. So we went to one of our favorite restaurants. It's Tia Juanita's Fish Camp. And there used to be one here in Lake Charles, right downtown, actually right down the road uh, from where I'm sitting right now. When we were able to go uh, to the Tia Juanita's in Beaumont and get the boudin quesadillas, had some chips and salsa just to relieve some of that stress, stress from, the, from our adventures today. So, um, Mr. Cinco's doing good. Thanks for the help from the doc. Thanks for all of your love and support. Uh, I'll keep you posted on how Mr. Cinco's doing. Hopefully no issues between now and next week. And uh, we'll get that stitch out and he'll be good and healthy and ready to have a nice, nice long rest for the rest of the season. If you want to help with Mr. Cinco, there is no GoFundMe. There is no Save Mr. Cinco fund. He'll be all right. We got it. But every every little bit helps, you know. If you wanna if you wanna support the cause, maybe check out this long sleeve tea that we have on lunageckos.shop. I'm kidding. We don't need it to cover Mr. Cinco's vet bills. Honestly, a lot of people talk about the fact that if you have animals, you need to be prepared for these unexpected expenses that might come up. Um, so far, today's visit, uh, I guess we have gas and travel time and and. Uh, uh, dinner at Tia Juanita's and, and, you know, some additional expenses associated with that. But I, I would have eaten anyway, so that's really not a big deal. Uh, today we spent $137 at the vet. Not bad. Or, you know, I, I guess what I would call a minor surgical procedure and some medication. Um, I would imagine there's going to be a, a bit of a charge next week uh, when we take that stitch back out. But not sure, even if there is, it can't be a whole lot, um, given the fact that today was only $137. So stay tuned, I'll keep you posted on how Mr. Cinco's doing. He's right here. He's in there resting for the night. He had a tough day. Ciao.